Hey, I'm Andrea, and in this video we're going to look at some Cardinals players that could be traded this deadline. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm still shocked that the Cardinals have not been doing so well this year. They're nine games back in the NL Central, ten and a half games back of the wild card, and I actually had them winning the division at the beginning of the year, so I think this is one of the more surprising storylines of MLB this season. And as we approach a trade deadline, they're more and more likely to become sellers. Now, I don't think they're going to be doing like a full fire sale or anything like that. Like, I don't think Arenado's going anywhere or Goldschmidt, but there are seven players that I think might be worth having a conversation to other teams about to see what they can get back for them. So starting with trade targets who are on free agent contracts, we'll start with Paul DeYoung. So DeYoung... He has a club option for next year that's worth $12.5 million, and then he has a second club option for 2025 that's worth $15 million. Now, I don't think they're going to exercise those club options because I think they're a little expensive. Uh, I think the Cardinals can either get a player of a similar skill set for less money, or I think they can lean on some internal options like Tommy Edmond, Nolan Gorman to take over the middle infield spots at least until the end of the season. DeYoung's biggest strength is that he's an above-average defensive shortstop, but he's also done pretty well offensively this year. He has a 757 OPS, which is the best he's done since 2019. I'm not confident that that's sustainable because nothing's really changed. Like he still has his below average bat to ball skills. He still has a really high strikeout rate at 30%. And he is showing a slightly more aggressive approach this season. Now there's nothing wrong with having an aggressive approach, except that it's causing his walk rate to dip to below average, and it hasn't been below average since 2018. Next up is Adam Wainwright. This is another interesting case because Wainwright is a franchise player. He's always been a Cardinal, so it's another tough decision for the front office. Given how high in demand starting pitchers are going to be this deadline because of all the injuries, I wonder if the Cardinals will see what they can get for Wainwright. In terms of how Wainwright is doing, he spent some time on the IL at the beginning of the season with a groin injury. But since then, he has eight starts, he has a 5.57 ERA, and his biggest struggle has been getting strikeouts. So his strikeout rate is only 12%, and that puts him in the bottom 2% of the league. Next up is a relief pitcher, Drew Verhagen. Verhagen's coming up at the end of his two-year $5.5 million contract, and he's likely to slot in as like a middle or back-end reliever on a playoff caliber club. The only thing is he doesn't have options remaining, so if a team were to trade for him, they would need to secure a spot for him on the 26-man roster, or risk losing him in waivers if they were to DFA him. While his performance hasn't looked that great on the surface, like his ERA is 4.46 through 34 innings pitched, his expected ERA is much better. It's 2.99, and he also has an average strikeout rate at 22%, so those are both good signs. Now his slider is his best pitch. It gets plus sweep and above average depth. It gets more chase and average, 10% more miss in zone. And he also added a cutter to this offseason that has above average cut. And like the slider, it also gets 10% more miss in zone than average. While those two pitches can look similar at times, there's a 7 mile per hour velocity gap between them. Next we'll look at trade targets who are still technically under team control, but are going to be free agents this offseason. So first up we have Jordan Montgomery. He's been performing just like he always has. Like everything's in line with his career. He has a 3.69 ERA, he has an average strikeout rate, 22%, better than average walk rate at 6%, and since joining the Cardinals, he's been throwing his sinker 7% more often, and he stopped throwing his cutter, and that seems to be working pretty well for him. His cutter would get hit hard, it would lead to a lot of damage, and while none of his pitches are elite, he's been carried by his control. His above average control has historically contributed to his success. And he could likely slot in the playoff rotation, like at the back end, as like a SP4, SP5. Jack Flaherty, I think, could also slot into a playoff rotation at SP4, SP5, even though he's currently the Cardinals' number one starter. Through 15 starts, he has a 4.95 ERA. He has an average MLB strikeout rate of 22%, but his uh, walk rate is worse than average at 12%. And he started throwing his cutter more this season, a pitch that he only threw a handful of times in 2022. He's using it primarily against left-handed hitters, which makes sense. You typically use a cutter versus the opposite hand. And while the contact against the cutter has not been great, like it has a 436 x slug against it, it's still getting 5% more in zone miss than average. Next, we have Jordan Hicks, who's a high-velocity ground ball reliever, except that he hasn't been getting as many ground balls as he usually does, and that's because he's making up for it with strikeouts. He has a 34% strikeout rate this season, which is 10% better than his strikeout rate last year, it also puts him in the top 5% of the league. And his biggest weakness, um, due to his high velocity probably, is his control. His 15% walk rate puts him in the bottom 4% of the league. And that increase in strikeouts is probably due to him adding a four seam this season. So in addition to that sinker-slider combination, he's got this 101 mile per hour four seam 
that has a whiff rate of 40%. Lastly, we'll look at trade targets who would be more than a rental. The player I chose has one and a half years of team control remaining, and that's Tyler O'Neill, who's a corner outfielder. The catch with him is that he was transferred to the 60-day IL on June 16th. He's been dealing with some back pain since the beginning of May when he was originally placed on the IL. His return is TBD. Uh, he was supposed to resume baseball activities on June 15th per MLB.com, but it's unclear whether or not that actually happened. Before his injury, he was off to a pretty slow start of the season. He has a 620 OPS through 99 plate appearances. His biggest strength historically has been his power, and his hard hit rates have consistently been above average. But his biggest weakness, similar to DeYoung, is his bat-to-ball skills. And he has a career strikeout rate that's pretty high at 31%, and a career whiff rate that's 10% worse than average. We can see what happens with O'Neill, like as we get closer to the deadline, if he does resume baseball activities and gets back on track, he might be worth exploring, especially since he has an additional year of control next season. Let me know what you think about the Cardinals. Like I said, I don't think they're going to do anything too crazy, because I do think they have a pretty strong offensive core. But for some of these players who are going to be free agents at the end of this year, I think it might make sense for them to sell and see what they can get back to better prepare them for next season. If you like this video, please hit subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Scalco Report. Thanks for watching!